I'll introduce uh, Jason. Now, Jason graduates at GBiz. Jason's got a long history of working in local governments, uh, working in local councils. You do that, Steve. Yeah. And uh, more recently, Jason's been doing a lot of work in property management, um, facilities management with the Olympic Parklands Authority. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds like a great story. <laughs> wow. Who's nervous? <laughs> okay. Um, thanks, Steve, for the intro. My name is Jason Gretz. Many of you would know me from my local government days and also working with Esri Australia. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, GIS today and the potential of GIS moving away from the low value mapping and data maintenance outcomes and looking at GIS centric business processes within our organisations. A few slides. Does your CEO get, CEO get what you do? Probably not. You know, a lot of our, a lot of our organisations have spent a lot of money, our CEO's money, in maintaining data and providing access to GIS data throughout our our uh, organisations through internet applications, yet our CEOs still don't get what we do. One thing they do get is enterprise planning, and GIS should be central to an organisation's success in developing a vision for that organisation, building that vision, and obviously maintaining that vision, and GIS is central to that whole vision. So how can GIS be used in this way? Uh, GIS can be used in developing the vision by looking at master planning. GIS can be used in terms of sustainable development, looking at what aspects GIS can be used in that, economic development, attracting business into our organisations, and managing our critical resources. A classic example of GIS, we all understand that GIS is rich in analysis. This is an, an exact, exact example of how GIS can be used as a decision support system to provide accountability and transparency in government. This helps us develop our policy moving forward. Policies may be LEP mapping, for instance. So we develop an LEP map and say, this is our vision for our community and this is how we want our vision communicated. This is what we're going to do moving forward. So a map is central to the way in which we communicate and it allows us to reach a vast uh, audience out there. But beyond that, the GS, the database side of GS, allows us to understand the financial implications of developing that vision. Okay, the, the misunderstood part of GS, the database side. So we can understand the cost to develop residential water, schools, and vehicle trips, the cost to the environment in developing that particular vision. So cost, we start looking at budget. What's the budget needed to support that particular vision? You know, we've got limited taxes, limited grants, and local governments like investing in Lehman Brothers. Okay, so we, we're losing money as well. So we need to manage that, we need to manage that budget uh, sustainably. So we t GS can also be used to develop a sustainable way in which local governments and governments generally spend that money. Sustainability in government is, is a financial and strategic imperative to management. They get this. They get this. But we do not do this in GIS. Having understand and develop that budget, we can look at how, the, how best to implement our asset management strategy in our organisation with the limited budget that we have available. We can develop a capital works plan to support the building of that particular vision. So in actually building that vision, we can look at the organization's spend in, a, in an asset class or an asset type. Okay? How much money have we put into a particular asset class and how much do we need to for it to be operational? So this is all stuff that we can do generally in the GIS. We can actually roll out a capital infrastructure plan and we can see here on the left all our, all our infrastructure uh, projects that we have. And we, actually, we actually see in the GIS a little dashboard application of how the GIS can communicate to various stakeholders throughout our organisation a sense of priority. Also in the GIS, we can actually dial down into looking at the work plans. Actually, now we're starting to build our asset management strategy, we can actually look at the work associated in terms of material, equipment, labour, all these costs, all these costs to develop our asset management plan according to our vision. But hey, when does the vision ever go according to plan and there's always problems, yeah? So in responding to problems, governments generally need to be able to respond to governments in an accountable and transparent way to give uniform response, right? We can't just, you know, push your CEO respond in a certain way. So even in responding to problems, we need to track the way in which we respond to particular problems. This is another example of how the GS can be used to sort of look at all our information, how that incident is being managed, and how, it, how an organisation is dealing with that particular problem. So we start to looking at reporting on our progress. How, how well are we doing in developing our vision? How well are we doing at comparing our actual costs of building that particular vision compared to what's planned, our fiscal management in, in, in building that particular vision for our communities of tomorrow? So in summing up, five minutes is very fast. Um, <laughs> GIS policy setting 
you know, I'm a strong advocate that GIS should be central to an organisation's success from the planning to the asset management and also the ongoing refinement in government to make our governments more efficient in the way in which they work. So our role as GIS advocates is to understand our strategic managers and executive management's imperatives, understand what they're in here to do, use software that's commercially available, readily used to make you successful and so that we can have GIS critical applications. We've provided access to GIS data, we've got that, we've got access to information throughout our organisations, yet we still don't have the recognition we have in the GIS industry. So we need to have the courage and conviction to provide GIS-centric approaches to business. Right? We need to move away from data and mapping, have GIS-centric processes. That's my talk, my five minutes is up. Um, so hopefully you guys as GIS leaders today and tomorrow have can see a little bit of how GIS can do more than just mapping and data maintenance. Yeah? And I thank you for your time.